Welcome to this open-ended conversation with Josie Wells, who's based in Brooklyn in New York. Josie is the author of the New York-based Footnotes and Indexes book club and the Footnotes and Indexes newsletter. She is a curator of content on Black history, Black culture, and Black feminism. And she brings together readings, which include videos, PDFs, books, articles, even musical playlists that foster a new kind of critical thinking. For me, Josie is a new kind of public intellectual, and she's been able to evolve from this journey as journalist to teacher in a really incredible way during the period of the pandemic uh, and, and hopefully much into the future. She's recently launched a new masterclass online on Black feminism, and we talk about this, her book club, and her experience in the last year living in New York in this most traumatic year uh, in this incredible open-ended conversation. Welcome, Josie. You have so many spinning plates and you've started a couple of new projects in the last year. Uh, and I'm really curious about how, you know, for you, from the path that you thought maybe that you were gonna be on, um, you know, for 2020, 2021, how much has continued the same in the same direction in terms of your work? And how much did you end up pivoting mm -hmm. and reacting to the circumstances that you found Ooh, yourself in? Um, that's a great question. Um, yeah, so for 2020, I started, um, actually, so in January 2020, I started a, a community-based book club. Um, and that one was being operated uh, out of a Black-owned cafe in Brooklyn, New York. And it was really important to, you know, um, not only to put together this community-based book club, because it's, I'm, a, you know, I'm just, I'm a big reader and it was just something that I was really interested in, in terms of bridging the, um, bringing a lot of like what I learned um, in, you know, at, at Rutgers University and sharing that with the public. Um, but also just bringing like my love of reading with people who are interested in reading um, and also with um, people who wanted to get into the habit of reading. Um, and so. And so, and at Rutgers, you studied uh, African-American yes, studies. Yes, I English, studied right? African-American studies um, and, and English, um, um, which I'm very proud of. I, yeah, it was, it was great. But um, so. So we have that on one end. And then on the other end, the neighborhood that I live in, um, Flatbush, um, the section of Brooklyn, there were, it's, it's undergoing a great deal of change as like many neighborhoods um, throughout the US um, are experiencing and have been experiencing for you know, a number of years. Um, and so Flatbush is one of those sort of neighborhoods, I think like, it's it's been like a recent phenomenon, if you will, of like gentrification coming into the neighborhood and just a lot of like displacement, as well as um, you know raising of of you know a lot of like homes and such and and it, you know Brooklyn for the most part, particularly in that area, looks very much like Manhattan. Um, there's just like a lot of like really really tall buildings, um, and so so yeah, so the the, the urban landscape change. And so, you know, so I had like this idea of wanting to create this book club um, and wanting to specifically, you know, uh, have it be community based, but also to operate out of a black owned business because, you know, there was, there's also like that threat of, you know, many of these businesses going out of business as a result of um, the neighborhood again, changing and prices increasing and so on and so forth. Um, so I had begun to, I had found a place, um, wonderful cafe, Lips Cafe, and, um, and you know, really hit it off with the owners of that cafe. Yeah, Lips, Lips cafe. cafe. And um, and so, you know, we started doing, and it, like the place is beautiful. It's like they have like this nice huge table and it's like, you know, like very much like this whole um, communal space, if you will. And so, yeah, so for January, February and March, 
you know, we had our book club. We started off with um, with James Baldwin. We then segued in, into some black feminist um, literature. And then we went into um, bell hooks. We went into bell hooks and, 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 and how are you getting people to join? Is it sort of neighborhood base? How many people were showing up? Because like, so you, so yeah. you just start, at your, so, you know, context, you're, you're a journalist, you're, you're in this space and you decide to do this. So did you consider this to be part of your sort of practice to bring people together? For you, was it more like, let's bring people from the community in and just see what I considered it, it to be a sort of activism, you know, like just like in terms of like, okay, mm -hmm. like what is it that I can do? How can I... Um, you know, sort of like, well, not even sort of, like, how can I be a community activist? Um, because I was really interested in, like, for me, it was just sort of like seeing what was happening in my neighborhood. Um, it just wasn't sitting well with me. And, and also just understanding, like, what, from conversations that I had with friends of different backgrounds, some of which, you know, um, they weren't necessarily readers, but they were really interested in, in you know having an understanding of just a better understanding of like why things were happening the way that they were you know unfolding um and then other other people with with um you know just a different kind of different kind of knowledge um i um you know wanted to wanted to bring all of those people into into one space the way that I got folks, you know, interested, I think like first and foremost, because the cafe was just so, you know, if you saw it, it's just like, it's really eye catching even from the outside. So, you know, so just like mm -hmm. talking to the owner and he was able to disperse on his social media website, you know, on his social media uh, page um, that, you know, that the cafe was going to start a, a book club. Um, and then I was also able to just like share with friends. I was just like, oh yeah, you know, I'm starting this book club. And people were just really excited. And um, yeah, and I ended up getting like, you know, some of the members were people that I knew and then others were people from the community. Um, I had one participant um, who I just, I've fallen in love with her. Um, and she was just like, you know, she told me, she said, you know, when I, um, I walked into the cafe and I found out that there was was going to be a um, a book club. I, you know, she decided to because she was like at that time she was looking to join a book club, and so she came to the book club and she was just like, mm -hmm. you know, what? it turned out to be a really great fit for her. Um, and she was one of those people who was also just looking for um, not only just to read but also to. I, I describe the book club as somewhat like it's very like interdisciplinary. And so I, I combine text with things like music, um, you know, like videos, um, documentaries and such. Um, so like super yeah, curated, it's, it's, not just like, please read no, this book. No, it's and very, very curated and, every, and it's very intentional. Mm -hmm. It's like we started off with James Baldwin. Um, I knew that... Um, that I then then wanted to go into um, some cultural criticism with with bell hooks, um, and we you know sort of explored uh, masculinity, um, and then I knew that from that point on I wanted to go into in some intersectional feminism, and so I had uh, shared with the group some pieces from Barbara Smith and Beverly written by Barbara Smith and Beverly Smith, who are considered um, foremothers of the black feminist movement in the US from the 1970s um, onward, um, or even like, you know, it, it, there are some things that happened <laughs> um, in the 1960s as well. But in terms of, you know, that, that philosophy being named. And so I wanted to share that with them. And what was so interesting was I remember like, you know, in, February, I was just like, oh, we're going to do black feminism. Like our next reading is black feminism. And the women in the group were just like, yes. <laughs> um, so that was. Mm. And so, and was it all? No. The so what, the, what breakdown the breakdown is, um, it is very, very, I, I, you know, stress that this book club is very, um, 
it's very inclusive, um, very like I really want to hold space for anyone who is curious, for anyone who wants to get into the practice of reading, for anyone who wants to sort of like think about, um, wants to deepen their analysis, wants to read works on intersectional feminism, on masculinity, so on and so forth. So we have, it's comprised of, um, primarily women but we have we have you know men who are who are involved we have primarily um caribbean people of caribbean descent um participants from nigeria from ghana um but also you know my my friends who are you know german american italian american irish american um latino you know um korean american like just it's, you know, it's, it's, and the thing about it is like, I, I, the sort of work that we read, although primarily for 2020, it has only been, it has, for the most part, we've done primarily all black writers. Um, and I think we did like, we did one white writer, um, but we did all black writers. Mm. Um, and that was just because of, the the way that 2020 was unfolding right with the mm -hmm. and you had asked me before in terms of like how like the pandemic and you know all of these forces um were impacting right like you know um my 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 intention my plans for 2020 with the book club um and so yeah so it was it was affecting it through you know there were times i was just like okay we're gonna <laughs> Let me back up. So in ways it was kind of crazy because I knew that I wanted to also focus on racism, talk about imperialism, talk about, you know, patriarchy and capitalism and such. Um, and I would say like for 2020, two of like the major themes for 2020 um, were patriarchy and white supremacy. Um, and so, mm -hmm. Yeah, Good. yeah, things here, and so we ended up going back to Baldwin in May, and I had the group read um, a an essay um, called "On Being White and Other Lies," and I want to say like our book club was our book club meeting. It was May fourteenth, and then shortly mm -hmm. after. Um, there was the murder of George Floyd and there was the, you know, um, just nationally you saw, you know, Black Lives Matter protests and then globally and, you know, so on and so forth. And there was, you know, the uprising that had happened. And so in a lot of ways, too, I felt as, as I felt as if it was also like prophetic, the things that we were reading, because it really prepared mm -hmm. um, many of the members in our in our book club, mm -hmm. you know, to be able to process to be able to process that. More tiring to engage. And then you have armed yourself and you've made yourself more resilient for the future to cope with or to engage with issues. And that's so powerful that you shared that. So I have, so and so, uh, and on the book, just a second question was, so then you were meeting on, on Zoom, I assume. Yeah. And then you, is the newsletter part of the book club or is it, Separate so the newsletter entirely. is part of the book club. Um, yeah. And so that was the other thing, right? It's just like by March, March 11th was our last date that we've seen each other in person. Um, and then we had to pivot to, to mm -hmm. Zoom. Um, and so we did that for April. Um, and all along, I had been writing these like um, newsletters to sort of... It, like I call it a newsletter and I posted like the last, you know, it's like, um, when, when we spoke, it was just sort of like, okay, is it, is it a newsletter? Is it, a, <laughs> you know, um, mm -hmm. and I like to sort of think of it as almost a syllabus, um, because mm -hmm. what I do with that is just basically, um, it's all of these, you know, it's, it's, the book club run goes for two hours. So there's only mm -hmm. so many things that we can, we can hit particularly when you have like um, 10 people, 15 people, 18 people, you know, attending the book club, there's only, it's gonna, that's going to eat up a lot of time. And so the newsletter is a way of me expanding on some thoughts 
Um, but also create, I, I tend to like, I, I usually, um, have a sort of like bibliography included with it. If, if people are interested mm -hmm. in reading other things to learn more about the, um, you know, whatever it is that we read, if they're interested in reading more about, um, I think like by the time we got to, um, no, in June we did NK Jemison's, um, the city we became and, um, and so I, I had included some information for, I think like links for, um, anyone who's interested in learning more about HP Lovecraft. Um, and mm -hmm. yeah, and just like some, some, it also includes like music as well. I, I like to create like a playlist, mm -hmm. um, just to, again, you know, it's just, I think it's like, for me, it's like, that's just the way that I think, I think very interdisciplinary. Um, I, you know, I'm always thinking about mm -hmm. how things like not only like the text is primary, but how like, um, literature, um, can, and, and other, you know, and music and, and movies and such, like, how do they complement one another? I just, um, you just expect that people are not they're like read your newsletter take a few top lines and be done with it and so you put all this bibliography in and like the why of it so but did you did you think about that or or did you just not even think about it because i find it incredible like you've had this engagement with this content and i think you know of course this year has been so weird and whatever else but it seems like you've tapped into something that was there right. anyway um yeah like i just i don't know it just made sense to me it was just sort of like I don't want it to just be, you know, a book club. I want for people to have something um, where they can kind of, you know, go back to it and, 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 um, you know, click on, on articles and journals and such. And I, the other thing too, is like, I want to mention that. So the name of the book club is called footnotes and indexes. Um, and that is really intentional. Um, because again, when you're reading a book, right, it's just like you're, <laughs> there are footnotes, right? And there are like indexes, like in the back. Mm -hmm. And so that's, <laughs> that's sort of like the explanation of like why, you know, like the newsletter and why like all this additional stuff. And I think also because it comes from my, from my um, learnings of um, English um, as well as African American studies, it's just basically, you know, crediting and and um, sourcing your information, right? Um, writing these research papers and having um, and citing citation, citation, citation. Mm -hmm. So I really want for you know to, for participants, people who are interested in reading the newsletter, for them to be able to go straight to the source um, and then make up your own opinion too, right? So that's the other mm -hmm. thing too. It's just like, it's really important. Mm -hmm. It's one thing for you to sort of like learn about, you know, I think like people, like what's happening on social media, conversations about um, all kinds of different, you know, topics, white supremacy, capitalism, so on and so forth those are really, really great. Um, but then it's just like, okay, let's, I want to, for participants, for subscribers to be able to not only read these, these essays, but to also, you know, um, the user is meant to be a sort of, here's a guide, like if you want to continue, you know, and as you said, it's just sort of like, okay, here's a guide if you want to continue. Mm. Well, also, I mean, I was thinking earlier as you're a journalist and that sort of, I guess, how you started mm -hmm. out um, your sort of officially defined career. And um, that's that can be, I'm sure, very reductive and in the world of headlines. Um, wow. You empowered yourself to say, I will not just write down a headline and this is my medium and I'm going to own it. And that's so inspirational and so powerful. And it takes a lot of courage to be able to do that. I'm sure, especially when your mm -hmm. profession <laughs> has set you up to communicate in like one very specific way that's <laughs> validated by like, you know, whatever the wall street journal mm -hmm. kind of headline and whatever. Yeah, no, else. Absolutely. Who absolutely. Um, like with, with what I'm doing right now, it's just, um, there's a, I feel a great deal of freedom, 
you know, it's just sort of like, okay, like this mm-hmm. is, this is a personal endeavor. This is, you know, just me, like just getting out there, putting myself out there um, and engaging with people. Um, you know, it's just like, I really feel as if like, yeah, I mean, I know that we are interconnected, whether we want to realize that or not, we are interconnected. Um, and so for me, it's just like, again, I had to make a decision in terms of, um, whether I wanted to live that as a philosophy, as, you know, it's just like as part of, um, who it is that I am and as part of like, what is it that I'm trying to do? Um, I also Mm -hmm. wanted to, you know, when you were, I also wanted to, like, when you were asking me about, um, 2020 and, um, and just, you know, like how the pandemic and, you know, um, the global uprising also impacted, you know, how, like, you know, like, um, impacted me and just like my plans and such. Um, the, the other thing was that in, uh, after, after George Floyd was, was murdered, um, I remember processing that and, um, and I remember really in a way, just like, I, 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 I remember like breaking down and crying. Right. Um, <clears throat> because it was like at that point it, everything just felt so heavy there was a pandemic um and which i had i was i was experiencing in complete isolation um had been you know in my in my brooklyn apartment um for months um at that point um you know for several months and and then you know that happening and you know, realizing like, oh my gosh, like I'm, I'm really trying to survive. I'm really trying to mm-hmm. not only um, stay connected, like through the, even like through the book club um, with, with community members and such, but also maintain, you know, my well being. And, and so when that mm-hmm. happened, I just remember I, I, I cried and then I was just like, okay, I have to do something. Like, I just remember like, even in my neighborhood, it was just like, you can hear like, you know, people, people were protesting, they were out there in the streets. And I was just so afraid to, 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 to go. Like I had like such anxiety as well. Right. And so it was just mm-hmm. like, okay, well, I had to name it for what it was. Um, and it was just like, okay, well, I can't do that. <laughs> right. Um, and then it was just like, all right, but what can I do? What can I do? And so that's when I also started to, um, I, I decided, I was like, I'm going to do a master class. I'm going to do a master class in, mm-hmm. in black feminism. And I started teaching <laughs> um, black feminism to, you know, I just like put something up on Eventbrite. I shared it with friends. Um, I created a sign up page and, you know, just let people know that this was going on. And, um, and I thought about women and, you know, women and men who were feeling like I, I was feeling, um, and who were also just really, really afraid of, you know, um, of leaving their homes and they were, and they were looking for just a way to kind of process and, and, and also to heal while all of this was going on, while you have like the pandemic and you have, um, you know, just people being, you know, being killed because of the color of their skin. Um, and so, yeah, so that was just something that was something else, you know, as well, just like I, it was another way of me like coping, right, with 2020, but also like a, a pivot um you know um with regards to like what were my plans right it's just like before that happened my plans were to to continue like doing the book club and continue like working on a newsletter and thinking about like other things that i wanted to um thinking about ways that i could expand the book club 
Um, but then, you know, mm -hmm. by the time after, after, you know, by, by the time that summer arrived, um, I, I then was just like, no, I also, I'm going to do this masterclass, which was like a whole month. It was every, every Sunday, um, participants, you know, we read, I think I, I assigned like seven, seven readings for the entire month. Um, and we had, and it was really interesting because we had like participants who, um, joined us from, from Egypt, from England, <laughs> you know, it was just sort of like, it was a very, you know, international. And how did they, how did they sign up? Did they sign up for the whole thing or would they sign up class by class? They, um, you, the way that I did it was, and I actually, I was just like, um, I, yeah, I put it up on Eventbrite and just offered it as a master class. It was like, this is a, like, I just let them like, look, this is a master class. I'm a little, you know, I'm, I'm going to, you know, uh, assign these, is it'll be seven readings. And so people, there were a good number of people who stayed like for the whole, you know, of course you had like some people who came in for like the, you know, the first two sessions and then, you know, they, they disappeared. But yeah, but it was just like, for the most part, I just made it avail. Like I remember when I first, and I was talking to one of my friends, I had, um, it was free, the masterclass. I was like, this is a free masterclass, <laughs> you know? Um, and that was important because I was also thinking about just the fact that like so many people had, you know, were unemployed. What happened, like what, how, like the, um, the pandemics, impact on the economy right and on more so like more important like unemployment what that meant and so i wanted to create this space where people can you know have access to this information and not have to worry about how they're going to pay for it um and so i just did a master class it was free but then um um we i did make it like donation based um and so, you know, it's like, okay, if people wanted to support that, they can support that. Um, yeah, and it was just basically. But Juicy, sure. can I ask you a question, like a good old capitalist question is, um, how are you making money? You're doing all mm -hmm. this other stuff. Where are you finding the space to feed I know. yourself? Um, <laughs> um, right now, I am working on basically like doing, um, more master classes, more more master classes to mm -hmm. that will be like those will no longer be free, right? Um, but mm -hmm. I've decided, like later in 2020, I started doing just like two hour long intro to Black feminist sessions, which that I had decided will will you know at least for right now, just like I'm going to continue doing making those free. Um, because again, this is about access. Um, and so I really, it's really important for me, for people to be able to access this information and for us to be able to process it together and work through the text together. Um, and aside from that, it's just basically mm -hmm. I freelance, you know, um, because mm -hmm. the, the economy, you know, I'm one of those people who was affected by the economy. Well, I mean, thank you for sharing it. And the reason I asked, and I actually have so many more questions about the masterclass and specifically the syllabus and the, the opening reading, the Black Feminist Statement, which I found like really incredibly powerful. Um, but the reason I asked you this question about money and being paid is because, you know, I, I felt like in reading about your work and the way you spent the last years, you've gone through this deeply collectively traumatic year, but particularly for yourself in the way that you described it. And you've given so much of yourself and there's different ways of getting back. And I think it's really interesting to hear about somebody who, you know, you seem to have, you know, bucketed your work and compartmentalized it into what you want to get out of each piece of it. Um, and it's not necessarily always the same thing. So you don't necessarily need to be paid uh, for the time and effort you put into your newsletter because you get so much back out of it. Um, and equally for your freelance work, you treat that as separate. And, um, you know, it's just one more model as to how, uh, as somebody who has like all of these side things going on, you know, 
how do we put our time into things and you know it's like even like when i had decided to make the the master class donation base um this was you know <laughs> some of my close friends just sort of suggesting like hey you know um you're putting like this you're doing all of this um creating the syllabus you know providing the readings you know um because it, those who participated in the master class they did not have to buy any books they didn't have to do anything all they had to do was just do the you know read the assigned readings and then show up and we would have conversations and such mm -hmm. um and so yeah so just like even so my friends had suggested it was like well, at least make a donation base because people will want to donate um, um and that was great i mean people did donate and you know but when i talked to i had some some women who were part of the book club who had also participated in the master session um, I've had people come to other black um, feminist sessions that I've conducted. And when I read the response afterwards, um, the testimonials, and people say, this has given me clarity, um, or this has been, you know, I've, I've had people say, well, um, one of the, 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 one of the, women who attended the um the black feminists she told me she said um she had taken a gender studies at um um she had taken a gender studies at nyu and she said she she was like there was of all the readings that she had done there was only one reading that focused on black feminism and so she says she was like you have no idea like this master class has been in, it's been transformative um, and that makes me feel good. That makes me feel purposeful. Mm -hmm. um, and, mm -hmm. and I had someone else who told me, I remember the last, our last session of that masterclass, this woman was, I mean, like I was teary eyed, she was teary eyed, other people were teary eyed. And she was saying, she said, you know, between therapy and this masterclass, these are the two best things that I've done for myself during lockdown you know and that's just that i don't know it's just like it is just so moving to to know that you know this person is feeling this way and it's just like in that um that her reading you know these particular texts and and just like um i guess like my creating like this sort of circle that that was what she got out of that and that was just i i just i don't know it's just like i for me it's just even like when i was saying like i had spoken to someone from the book club yesterday and it was you know she was telling me um she had told me she said you know i feel as if like i can defend myself i'm reading these things and i've i've grown you know in 2020 and 2021 i feel as if i can there are certain things that people will say microaggressions and such and now i can defend myself that brings me a great deal of satisfaction to hear you know um another person say that um i don't know it's just like yeah it's just so it's just like yeah it's like yeah it would be great you know like <laughs> the money and so on and so forth but it's just like i didn't yeah, but that wasn't, yeah, and it's just like, but that wasn't the reason why I had, like, when I decided that I wanted to do a community-based book club, when I decided that I wanted to do, um, start teaching, you know, um, black feminism, black feminism, I wasn't thinking about, you know, ka like, how much I could, I could make, or that, if, if I could even make anything. This was something about, again community activism right like it's just like how like what is it that i can do what can i do you know because like my people are hurting what can i do what can i do for the community um and that was what i can do it's just like i love curating um readings um i'm always i'm that person who's always suggesting to people something that they can read like you know it's just like oh okay you like hip-hop mm -hmm. i got some suggestions for you you like fashion, you know? <laughs> so, I, so I have a question. My last question is on that, is like around this is so um, this syllabus, like for the masterclass is 
I mean, if you can just tell us a little bit about it, like, did you plan it all up front? And then you start from this reading from 1974 and like I chills reading it and I'd love for you to share a little bit about it. But equally, what you've done is you have brought together the very contemporary and then um, contextualized 1974, frankly, isn't even that long ago. And yet in this, like the course of this struggle and this conversation is just one more marker in the story. Uh, so I'm curious about why you started with that and equally how you thought about curating mm -hmm. the syllabus. It comes from my journalism background, right? The thing is, is that when you're writing muse, you have to think about your audience. You have to think about, you mm -hmm. know, how they're going to like, you have to make it plain, like write it plain. Right. Um, and so that is my approach. Um, that was one of my approaches with the syllabus was first and foremost, this has to be like readable. This has to black feminism has to, um, you know, I'm thinking about women who maybe have not gone to, you know, um, university, if you will, you know, they just, they haven't gone to, they haven't done like a higher learning and and yet, nonetheless, like black feminism comes from a very like it comes from this struggle of, you know, like your lived experience. Um, and so I wanted I was, you know, I wanted to. Create a syllabus that would speak to them, but also that would um, I think like one of the biggest you know questions is like, what is black feminism? Um, and I also wanted to think about you know, um, first and foremost, like focus, I started off in the 1970s because that is when black feminism is named, um, not when black feminism emerges, right? Um, and so, um, and so I wanted to start off with that, um, also because there's a, you know, the, um, a lot of people read it as a come by he river collective statement. Um, but I've heard Barbara Smith say that is pronounced the come be river um, collective statement. Um, mm -hmm. But that statement that's published in 1977 is just so crucial because it is one of the earliest statements in which um, black women who were also, you know, many of them who were also lesbians talk about um, how oppressions interlocked, you know, how, how oppressions interlock and how that creates very unique experiences, you know, for, for people, um, you know, thinking about like class and, um, and race and sexuality and gender and so on and so forth, you know, disabilities and so on. Um, and so, yeah, I just, I wanted to, what I was thinking was, let us start with like the 1970s, right? To talk about like how, like when, when black feminism is named and what that meant, um, you know? And then I provided them, you know, readings that took us back into, into slave times. Um, and so the, the participants were able to explore, you know, um, Like I say that black feminism is named in the 1970s, but it becomes this thing, right? Like as soon as black women arrive in, you know, um, in colonial, you know, America, if you will, well, you know, obviously before it becomes America, arrives in 1619 um, in Jamestown, Virginia, right? Because it's just like, this is, <laughs> they're women, um, but they're also black. And so they're having to do, you know, work the fields and toil and, you know, so on and so forth, um, in ways that white women are not having to, you know, they're, they're not, they're not having to, to do those very same things. And so, yeah, so I just like, I really wanted for participants to have a really great, like historical overview of what, like what black feminism is and for them to understand that it doesn't it doesn't begin. This isn't something that is new. This is something that has existed as long as, you know, black women have been, have existed. It's just like, it's just something that has always been here. Um, that feminism isn't 
um, a Western thing. It is something that is a very lived experience thing mm -hmm. that, you know, it's just like, it's not a US based, you know, um, um, philosophy. There is feminism, you know, um, just globally. Right. Um, and so I want it mm -hmm. for participants to understand that, but I also want it for, you know, yeah, I included contemporary readings because I wanted them to also, you know, see, um, themselves in, in the text. Um, and so, yes, I included like things from like, um, I think it was like, um, Joan Morgan and, um, and, you know, writers from, from Jamaica and, you know, just, and I think like one of the essays that focused on, on reggae music and, you know, we, we had some, um, participants, you know, of Caribbean background. And so, you know, they were just like, it was great to hear them say, you know, I want, to, I didn't know that there was like feminism in Jamaica and, and, and now I want to go and explore mm -hmm. this. Um, and the other thing too, is just like, I'm always thinking about like, how do you keep people engaged? Like you can't just because you like, for me, it's just like, look, I love reading a good, you know, academic journal. Um, but that is not for everyone. You know, it's like, I love reading theory, but it's not for everyone. So it's just like, how do you keep people engaged? Um, and so those were things that I thought about. Um, and as well as like, I do like, even like with, so with the black feminism and the, the book club, it's just like, there's also, we play, I, I create games. Like we do interactive games. Um, we do, um, you know, I'm actually creating one for, for the book club for April. Cause we're reading our first, um, our first novel for up until this point, we've been doing all nonfiction work. Um, but where, you know, and I also think about that. It's just like, okay, if we, if we started off with Martin mm -hmm. Luther King in January, and then we went into bell hooks again in February, and now we are doing Audrey Lord and Rebecca Solnit, you know, um, where I'm actually doing a book club mm -hmm. tonight. Um, and so that that's what we're working through. Um, and, and both of those pieces, we're doing um, Audrey Lord's The Transformation um, of Silence into Language and Action. And then we I've paired that with Rebecca Solnit's A Short History of, you know, of Silence. Um, those are really, you know, it's like, and I love that essay by Rebecca Solomon. It's 39 pages, right? And so it's just like, it's very, and there's like a lot to work in, um, work through. She talks about philosophy. I did want to, you know, sort of, we end each, um, conversation by asking, um, our guests if they, if they have a call to action to share with our audience. Um, and if, if you have, if you had to share just one, what would it be? It would just be. If there is, you know, each of us, we have the power to affect change. Um, and no matter whatever it is, like, no matter what is it, you know, that, that you, actually, I want to back, I want to back up. I would say, don't look to your left, don't look to your right. Whatever it is that you can share, you know, share that. That's basically it. Because right now, like 2020 has shown us that um, we cannot afford to be disconnected from one another, right? So it's just like whatever it is that you can do, whatever it is that you can do, don't discount it. Don't dismiss it as being too small. Just do it.